So I'm going to solve five different examples of logarithmic equations. I'm going to give you a couple of strategies that might work for you. So this first one, I've started drawing my arrows. Log base 2 of x minus 3 is 4. And we can, one of our strategies can be to rewrite as an exponential function. Rewrite as, how about exponential equation? So it's the base raised to the answer gives you the argument, is how this logarithm equation turns into an exponential equation. So 2 to the fourth equals x minus 3. So now I no longer have a log equation. I have an exponential equation, and it's not really even an exponential equation because 2 to the fourth is just a number. So 16 equals x minus 3 and solving for x by adding the 3 to both sides gives us an answer of 19. So this is my answer, and we can check log base 2 of 19 minus 3 is that 4. Inside the parentheses first, log base 2 of 16 is, in fact, 4 because 2 to the 4th is 16. So it does check. Okay, so let's do another example. Log base 5 of x plus 2 minus 1. It's outside the parentheses. It happens after, right? It's not part of the argument. And all of that equals 1. So our first step on these, we need to get the log term isolated if we can. So how would I isolate this log term? Exactly. If you're going to add this one, before we do anything else, we're going to bring this one over to the right side. So now I have log base 5 of x plus 2 equals, let's see, that's going to be a 2. Okay. So the same thing we did up top. Grab the base, raise it to the right side, and that gives you the argument. 5 to the second, over here, equals the argument, x plus 2. Okay. And that's what we have to solve. So I've got 5 squared is exactly 25, so I'll come up and over here. 25 equals x plus 2, so it looks like x is 23. And we should check one more time just to make sure. This is my answer. I'll go ahead and circle it so that we don't lose it. And then we're going to check. Is log base 5 of 23 plus 2 minus 1 equal to 1? There's my 25, so I've got log base 5 of 25 minus 1. Log base 5 of 25 is 2 minus 1 does equal 1. Check. Okay, example 3. I should have left myself more room. I see that now. Here we go. Oh dear. I have two logs now. I have log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of x minus 8, and that equals 2. I can't do my take the base and raise it to the other side if I have two terms. So I really need to get one and only one log term if I can. Now, if I wanted to, I could try to get a log term on both sides of the equation, but they, would, they couldn't be anything else. I couldn't have the two just hanging out there. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and combine these two log terms because they have the same base. So I'm going to use some log properties and bring these two log terms together. So log base 3, so if I'm adding two log terms, I combine them by multiplying the arguments. So if you don't remember that, check out a video on log properties. So here's right that argument, and here's that argument, and I multiply them inside. So log base 3 of x times x minus 8 equals 2. Now I'm ready to rewrite in exponential form.
base raised to the right side equals the argument, which is now this whole thing here. And that's what we have to solve. We're not done. We're just getting those x's we want out of the logarithm. So let's see, I've got a 9 equals, we should just get rid of the parentheses, see what you have in front of you, x squared minus 8x quadratic, which means I need a 0, so bring the 9 over. So 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 9. You can now use any trick you have for solving quadratic equations. I'm going to go ahead and factor, so x minus 9 times x plus 1, which gives me the answers x equals 9 and x equals negative 1. Now, all of that checking that we've been doing up till now, and it's just worked out fine, this time, when we go to check, one of these doesn't work. And I'll tell you about that in a second. So 9 does work. I'll go ahead and circle that one. The x equals negative 1 doesn't. I'm going to put an x through that one, and let's think about why. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to check the 9. It works. You can check it on your own. Here's why the negative 1 doesn't work. When I have log base 3 of negative 1, plus log base 3 of negative 1 minus 8, so negative 9. I actually can't do these. This isn't allowed. I can't take the log of a negative number. Remember that the argument had to always be greater than 0. So negative 1 isn't even in the, not in the domain of logarithms. And you want to be careful because sometimes Right, it might work in one of the originals, but not in both of them. So in this case, negative 1 doesn't work in either. But say if I would have had x equals 6, and I know it's not the right answer, but come, come along with me here. So if somehow we came to an x equals 6 answer, that would have been fine here. I could have found an approximate value for log base 3 of 6. But when I try to do it on this one, I'd have 6 minus 8. I'd get a log base 3 of negative 2 here, and that would have thrown us off. Okay, so make sure that the value you find works in both terms. Okay, so I have two more examples. Here we go. Log base 7, that's a 7, of 5x. No parentheses, but I'm assuming they're implied. Minus 2 equals log base 7 of x plus 3. So remember I said it'll be fine if you can get just one log on either side, but I can't have this extra minus 2. Now, if that would have been in parentheses so that it, the whole thing was the argument, then that would have been fine. I could have just set the two arguments equal to each other. In this case, it's not. I, right, this is the argument for this log. Negative 2 is just hanging out. So I'm going to do a bunch of rearranging, gather all my log terms together, anything that's not a log on the other side. Here we go log base 7 of 5x, this guy comes over, minus log base 7 of x plus 3. The 2's moving over to the right side. Okay. Now I need one log on the left, so log properties. Now I'm subtracting two logs, so remember what that does to the arguments. Exactly, we divide them, so 5x over x plus 3 equals 2. Then we use right an exponential form, base, raised to the right, raised to the second power, equals the argument, 5x over x plus 3. And then this is what we have to solve. So I'll come up and over. 49 equals 5x over x plus 3. Look how much practice we're getting for all those other types of equations we've solved in the past. Multiply the x plus 3 across to clear out your denominators. 49 times x plus 3 equals 5x. 
distribute 49x plus, oh dear, what is that, 27 carry the 2, 147. And this looks like a linear equation, right? So I get all my x's together on one side, everybody who's not an x on the other. So let's see, I'm partial to positive x coefficients, so I'm going to have 44x equals negative 147. And my final step before I check, oh gosh, take a look. Did I get that right? 49. I'm checking because you see I'm getting a negative number. That's going to be a problem. Okay, so I've got 49, 5x over x plus 3. I multiply that up. I distribute, all looking good. I brought my 5x over, that's positive. I bring my 147 over here, that makes that negative. So my answer is negative 147 over 44. But what happens when I try to plug that into that first term? I have the log base 7 of an ugly negative number. I can't do it. So even though I found this as an answer, it's not really because it's not in the domain. So this one would have no solution. And that's going to happen. Right? It'll happen more often than you'd care to think about, okay, especially after all this work to find a no solution. So be careful. Remember to check. Okay, last example. Natural log of x minus 2 equals 4. So the negative 2 isn't part of the argument. It's not in parentheses. Same idea that we want to isolate the natural log term first. So add the 2. Right, we add it to both sides. So now I have natural log of x is 6. How do I break the x out of there? What's the base of that natural log? And you might take the step where you rewrite that as log base e of x. That's what natural log means, where e is that number, 2.718, blah, blah, blah. And then exponential notation, e, the base to the other side, e to the sixth, is x. Okay, and this would be our exact answer. And this one, when we actually, we could find that number, and we probably wouldn't even have to approximate. Let's see. E, do you guys want to see that? Put my calculator down. I'm not sure if it's going to show up. Um, e, right down here, to the sixth. I know. Uh, oh, oh, yep. See, we'd have to stop writing. We can't get an exact answer there. So e to the sixth is... So this is exact, approximately, would say 403. And then depending on where you're asked to round, gosh, it looks like rounding at that 7 looks pretty good. So 403.4288. So rounding to the 10 thousandths. So this would be our approximate answer. All right, good luck.